Do you have enough money? Do you believe there is enough money in circulation? Do you know how money is created? Would you like to increase your purchasing power? Most money in circulation is created via a loan process. An individual will go to a bank and sign an application for a loan. That signature is important, but the application itself is not the money. If the application is approved, then the bank will have the borrower sign what is called the promissory note. That promissory note is in fact a specie of money and it forms the source of the funds that the banks then lend. They convert this specie of money into credits on their computer file, which can be withdrawn as cash, written off as checks, and all of these are different species of money. But it is the original signature on the promissory note which actually creates the money which is lent, and without it no money is created and there is no lending. Now the problem with this is that what is created and loaned is always less than what is demanded as repayment, and the interest is never created, although it is demanded. The end result is that the demands for repayment outweigh the money in circulation. It's rationally unsound, it's mathematically impossible to repay completely. That is why you do not have enough money and there is not enough in circulation. That's why people are now borrowing so much just to meet their monthly needs. And it's what allows the banks to artificially create um, ebbs and flows within the circulation of money, which allows them to uh, slowly take over all of the real wealth of the country. Now remember, the individual signature was the thing that created the money, and in this case, it was on a promise to pay. But promissory notes are not the only specie of money. And not all species of money uh, must evidence a promise to repay with interest attached. They can, in fact, evidence service already performed. Now, restaurants are obliged to follow the statutes under which they operate. And since they are providing consumer goods, they are obliged to follow the Act which deals with such goods and such transactions. That Act, believe it or not, is the Bills of Exchange Act. Specifically, Part 5. It's a very short part and clearly outlines that we as individuals, when making certain purchases, have the right and the power to merely mark a bill in a certain manner and turn a consumer bill into a consumer note. That consumer note has value and can be presented by the restaurant along with their other receipts and payments and turned into deposits in their account. And all it cost you was your signature. Now part of the problem is people don't understand what money is and will ask, well, where does the money come from? This is due mostly them to them being familiar with, with one certain specie of money. If it is a credit or a debit card, it is coming out of one account. If it is a check, it is coming out of an account. If it's cash, it's coming out of their own pocket. And with the exception of cash, they all act as money by pointing to an account or authorizing a withdrawal from an account. And so the money must come from somewhere. However, with this specie of money, it does not have to come out of an account, merely be deposited into one, because you are making it with your signature as a consumer. And it is, it is at this point that the money is actually being created, just like in the example of the promissory note. Now, the restaurateur has the right to take that note to the bank, just as they would cash, credit, or checks, or debit card slips, and have it deposited to their account and credited for their use. All the bank has to do is credit their account and then cancel the original note by marking it deposited. They are not asked to reach into their own pile of money and pay the restaurateur. They do not have to draw from any other account. It costs them nothing except the time it takes to punch a couple of keys and handle that note to completion. Now they are free to charge their client a reasonable fee for this service, but what they are not free to do is to refuse to accept such notes or to decide that they will not honor these notes or uh, they certainly do not have the right to threaten restaurateurs with arbitrary or unlawful sanctions in order to obstruct or hinder their lawful creation and use. Reason is for this is that when made properly and according to law, 
you are merely exercising your right to access your share of the wealth of this country in a lawful manner. To deny that is an act of fraud. I believe that both the restaurants and the banks have a fundamental duty to accept and honor these notes. Due in large part to a history of serfdom and class subjugation, many believe that it is noble to work at a job one hates merely in order to feed themselves or their families. The idea that we need to work to eat is a class-based anachronism. Many rely on this because a hungry and desperate population is far easier to control and, and milk. Advances in technology now mean that many jobs are becoming obsolete. Jobs are for machines and passions are for people. Even the Bible speaks of the kingdom of heaven and our right to not have to worry about eating. When it comes to morality, the idea that all money must be created by banks who charge interest is deeply immoral. It results in a populace desperate to engage in exchange but lacking the tools to do so. It means hungry people walking by restaurants which are going out of business for lack of customers. It means mathematically that the demand for repayment of money lent is greater than the supply of money in circulation. Even if all the money out there was used to pay back the ones who supposedly lent it, there would still be an outstanding debt. Logically, there has to be another source for money in circulation besides those who lend it at interest. Now, for those who believe that merely following the law is immoral and are against this right being exercised, there is a very simple solution for you. Simply do not do it yourself. Stand on your moral high ground and enjoy your view. But please do not try to impose your morality on others, especially when it involves asking the government, banks, and restaurant operators to ignore the law and defraud the people of a valuable consideration. Well, let's, let's look at what could happen to the world if this became a thing, and it was recognized as the, the proper way to put the majority of your money into circulation. Certainly the banks aren't going to like it, they're going to lose their monopoly on that. But just imagine a world where everyone could pay for their meals with their signatures because the bills with your signatures will rec were recognized by the operators as, uh, and banks as valuable notes. They would do this because they realize that we are we the people are the owners of the country and they even they have to even have our, our permission to even operate competing restaurants would vie not for our cash or our cards but for our signatures on their bills these signed notes being recognized as a specie of money which can be created by the consumer and only the consumer are credited to their accounts from which they can draw to pay their suppliers employees and overhead these signatures end up being the source of the money in circulation and reflects the wealth and the happiness of the people. It is created without interest and with no need to pay the banks anything. It cuts the banks out of the money creating step and requires them merely to account for it. They will of course not like that because they enjoy their money creation monopoly. Since people would not have to worry about their food purchases, money which would have been spent on food would be naturally redirected elsewhere. Since people would need to work less, they would end up having more free time, allowing them to pursue their callings, professions, passions, or commercial endeavors. I don't think most people would just sit on their butt and play video games eating pizza. I think they would be inspired to find their passions and supported in their goals. I think it would mean a society where no one is hungry, for anyone can go to a restaurant and eat and pay with their signature. It would provide built-in assurance against food shortages and food riots because even in the face of a financial meltdown or a money withdrawal, people would still be able to eat, restaurants would still be able to pay their suppliers because the money is being supplied exactly as needed for that purpose. Okay, let's forget a moment about the subjective and esoteric moral and philosophical arguments. Let's look at the legal argument. 
Do we have that right? Not should we have it, but do we have it? Not is it right to do so, but is it criminal to do so? And if it's not criminal to do so, then we've got a right to do it. We must only really look at a few things. One, what is a consumer purchase? Is a meal in a restaurant a consumer purchase as defined by the Act? Can a consumer mark a consumer bill in a certain manner and create a consumer note? Does that note have any value? Is the permission or the agreement of the restaurateur required to effect payment in this manner, or does the consumer have a right to decide that they choose to pay this way? Now, I've done this three times, and the first time I did it resulted in criminal charges, which were then withdrawn after I presented my legal argument concerning this, this process to the Attorney General and uh, the prosecutor and uh, uh, other people. Uh, I then did it another couple of times in a different process, in a different province, served notice on the people that I was doing it, and when the police attended, they said, this is a civil matter as far as we're concerned, he paid, and uh, we're not getting involved. Now this is what the Attorney General's uh, a Crown Counsel, Bernie Wolf, had to say concerning the charges under three, Section 364, fraudulently obtaining food, beverage, or accommodation, which, if you do this process, if you pay for it in this process, it's possible that because of ignorance, the manager will call the police, the police will come, and again because of ignorance, they will try to charge you under Section 364. But when I presented my legal argument, this is what they had to say. Our office has received a police report alleging that you have committed the above noted offenses. We have reviewed the report circumstances and have decided not to proceed with criminal charges and a prosecution of this matter. In view of this ministry's responsibility to the public, you must understand that if further reports are received alleging other offenses, this letter will be considered in determining whether or not whether we proceed with a prosecution. Yours truly, Bernie Wolf. Now that's a very clever le letter. Uh, it almost sounds like they're giving me a warning saying, okay, we're being nice, we're not going to charge you this time, but if you do it again, then we will consider bringing charges against you. But when I showed it to a lawyer, she looked at it and said, that's carte blanche. They, they can't possibly charge you again after this. They are recognizing that they have a duty to bring criminal charges. The, they have a responsibility to the public to bring these criminal charges to bear if I had engaged in criminal activity. And then they're saying we're not bringing any criminal act, we're not bringing criminal charges to bear. What if it's simply not contrary to Section 364 of the Criminal Code of Canada to sit down, have a meal, and when the bill comes, mark it, sign it, and give it back, and you can argue that you have paid? Someone asked me what I thought our biggest challenges with this would be. Now, I've, I've done it. I've talked to restaurant operators who would be willing to accept it as, lo as long as it wasn't a problem at the banks. I've examined the legal argument when dealing with the banks, and I'm pretty sure that we'd be able to, to overcome any, any uh, hindrance they might put up. I think the biggest problem is going to be the people themselves, the people of Canada. We are so conditioned. When you think about it, we have five-day work weeks now, thanks to unions. But it, it, it happened not because one person stood up and said, I'm going on strike, but because a number of people did. A whole bunch of people did. You didn't have one guy go on strike and everyone else say, okay, well, you go on strike, prove that it works, and when you're done, when you do that, then we'll join you. People who went overseas and fought during the, the conflicts, during World War I, World War II, they didn't say, okay, well, you go all by yourself, prove that it can be done, and once you've done that, come back, and then we'll join you. So the same is true with this. For an action like this, I see the need for several hundred people anyways to do it all at once. Otherwise, you end up looking like just a, I don't know, a small group of wingnuts who can be easily labeled as moochers or who have a, uh, an, 
a misunderstanding of the way the law works. But if you start getting a thousand people, say, standing up and all doing it in one weekend, the, the restaurant op operators won't have any choice but to take these bills and submit them to the banks for, uh, for completion, for deposit into their accounts. So that's what I think our biggest problem is going to be, is finding a thousand people who care enough about the country, who, who are willing to um, stand up, go to a restaurant, have a meal, sign the bill, and say, no, this is it. I'm part of the Association of Canadian uh, 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 Consumer Purchasers, and um, this is how we are paying for our consumer purchase. If you don't like it, you can bring criminal charges to bear, and we'll deal with that at that time. So... Can I find sufficient people who are willing to take the risk to help make this happen? Or is it a nation of ninnies who just want to sit on their butt, even though they know they're being screwed, will allow it to continue until someone else fixes it for them? I guess we'll find out.